Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Heaven. My name is Raymond and in this episode I'm going to do an unboxing of Sanctuary The Keeper's Era by Tabula Games which had a very successful Kickstarter. I also reviewed a prototype of this game which you can watch if you click the link in the description below or the eye in the corner of this video. Tabula Games sent me the prototype to review it for their Kickstarter and it was a lot of fun and they had a very successful Kickstarter and they used used to have these tuck boxes with three fac factions in each box. So there's six factions in total. And the Kickstarter edition came with this nice looking big box that has all the six factions in it, plus some extra play mats as well and 3D tokens. So I'm very excited to see how that looks. And I also got some extra mats that I want to show you and a package of champions and villains set of foil cards. So that's pretty cool as well. So let's quickly open up the box and see what's inside. Okay, so let's take a look at the box first. It's a nice and big box. It has a nice font on the cover, Sanctuary, the Keeper's Era, with a little bit of um, artwork in the back. It's kind of faded out and dark, but it looks really nice. Here's the front, and I think it's a magnetic box or or you, sh you slide it out, perhaps, I'm not entirely sure. No, it looks like it has a edge that you can flip open. So uh, that's the back and the side. And on the bottom of the box, there is some information about the world and the contents, the six decks, the six factions, and some extra components here, eight cards, stuff like that, solo cards, because you can play this game solo as well. And it's technically a one versus one game, so a two player game, but the solo mode is uh, very interesting as well. I did also play two solo mode games on my channel just to try it out, so you can find those as well. And it has some 3D tokens, etc. So yeah, looks uh, very nice. So uh, yeah, let's just... Uh, get this uh, shrink wrap off carefully. I'll just make a hole there. All right. There we go. Get rid of that. So it's a nice matte black finish. Looks really classy with the golden uh, outlines of the letters. So yeah, there is a uh, a magnetic seal here so uh, you can flip it open like this with some oh that's some nice art on the inside there I don't know if I can show that properly I'll, I'll give that a try this is as far as I can go but as you can see it says sanctuary the keepers area here this is at the top and it has uh, these monsters here printed on the inside that looks really good. That's just super nice. All right. And then inside the box, we have this sheet with an overview of the two versus two mode over here and the components that you need for that, the winning condition, player's battlefield, so basically the setup, deck hand of cards, discard pile and champion zone, essence crystals and units. It's all explained here in a quick overview. You can do deck building if you want to, but you can also just use the decks as they are. Uh, artifacts and how they work. Uh, these are uh, the artifacts that you can use, I see. So that's new. There's a chapter here about Echo and about the community cards. So those are some added things that have been added uh, in the Kickstarter um, that weren't there in the, in the prototype. We've got some new special cards that look really nice as well over there. There's a solo campaign mode even. That's pretty cool. And a one versus one campaign mode. So that's pretty interesting. There's quite a few ways to play this game. Just put that there. So there are uh, these uh, six factions in their own tug boxes. As you can see, just small tug boxes with really cool artwork. Let's just take a look at these one by one. So these are the Thanon, 
which are kind of like flying creatures. And they have their own symbol. A couple of cards on the back, the contents. Nice art there. And inside is the deck. So you'll notice there's plenty of room here. So if you want to sleeve your cards, that will double up the size of the deck more or less. So that will still fit in these tuck boxes quite easily. And if you don't want to uh, sleeve your cards and you just want to bring along a couple of decks, you can just put two regular decks unsleeved in here and just take one of these tuck boxes with you with some of those tokens and just, you know, play it on the go. So that's cool as well. So right, this is the deck. And let's just open that up. Okay, let's focus. There it is. So this is the champion of the deck. Each deck, each faction has one champion, which is a very powerful uh, soldier fighter for you. And the acolytes are basically all of your fighting units. Some really cool art. There you go. This looks nice, Prismatic Serpent. And these icons are their special abilities. So you got these Acolytes, all kinds of different ones. Really loving the final artwork here. Prototype did not have all the artwork yet. So uh, this is really nice. And aside from Acolytes, you also have Rituals, which are basically your spells. So they just have a one-time ability and then they are discarded. So that's pretty cool. And these finally are your sanctuaries because that's what the game is all about. You're defending your own sanctuaries and attacking your opponent's sanctuaries, trying to destroy them. This is their defense. And every turn they charge one of these points. And uh, once they're fully charged, you can use this special ability, which really changes the game. So there's four different ones. And once you've destroyed all four, I believe, of the opponent's sanctuaries, then you win. So there you have it. So that's the Thanon deck. Just put that back in real quick. All right. And you'll notice that these names on the bottom of the box, because you can take all of this out, are all the names of the backers. So uh, that's pretty cool as well. Let's see. The Antar. Oh, yeah. Let's take a look at the box first. So the Antar here are kind of like a, uh, a cult. Spellcasters, mirages and subtle tricks are the secret of the Antar, devoted to the essence of subjugation. Kind of like that Bene Gesserit. <laughs> so yeah, let's have a look at those cards. So this is Vatap, the judge of the Antar, that's their champion. And then we've got the Sisterhood. So these are all the Acolytes, Gifted Blade Dancer, Fervent Speaker. I have already seen some of this art in the prototype, but there's uh, a lot of new art as well, so it's really cool. The Hand of Fatap, Touch of the Gifted, that's a ritual. Another ritual here. And therefore, sanctuaries. Some really lovely art. A relic of the eye. The Garden of Five. Nice. Okay, so those are the Antar. Okay. Then we've got the Ganto. Also looking really nice. Cool art on the side and on the back. Solitaire and wise, the Ganto worship the essence of growth. So let's just take a quick look and 
open up this deck. So here it is, the champion in Ashtet, Mender of the Ganto. And all of these decks, of course, have different strategies, different ways to play them. So it takes a little of getting familiar with these cards. It's really cool. Once, uh, you know, you need to get familiar with how to play these, how to use these cards. And, uh, well, once you do, it gets really interesting. It's really cool. Really nice artwork. Tabula Games often has, you know, games with some beautiful artwork. They did, did a good job with that. Another ritual here. Break the seals. Hmm. And there, oh, there's already, there's sanctuaries in here. All right. So let's take a look at that. Sentient Rocks, Hall of the Foresighted, Heart of the Swamp, cool, and the Pools of Omniscience. So yeah, that's cool. So let's take a look, what are these cards then? So let's see, what, what does it say in the back? Doesn't doesn't really list them on the box so maybe just just put those inside here because this is a corruptor and a construct which is used in the solo mode and they all have these abilities already printed on them so yeah two constructs two different constructs so this is definitely for the solo mode and this is the turn structure of the solo mode with all the different attribute icons explained here. So this is a very handy reference card. So you have the two reference cards and these solo mode cards in there with the Ganto deck. But I mean, I guess you can keep them separate from the rest. All right. So here is the rule book. I believe it's a very small rule book. So you can put that inside one of those um, tuck boxes as well, if you want to, you know, take it with you and not have to lug the entire box. So um, that's pretty cool. It's pretty small though. And the binding is pretty deep. So it's, it's almost, they almost had all these page numbers in there, but you can just read them. That's a bit of a shame. It would have been nice if that had been a little bit um, more margin there. Yeah. But yeah, sure. I mean, it's a pretty big book, actually. There's not a super... Oh, all the cards are explained. Right, okay. So, no, no, actually, that's just one ritual and one sanctuary. Hmm. So there's a lot. Of rules. The, the prototype rule book was just like four pages, so I mean, the basic rules are pretty simple. But I guess they went and explained a whole lot more in the rules to clear up some questions that may have arisen during the Kickstarter. And of course, it's a small booklet, so you can't put that much text on one page. I do recognize a lot of this. Yeah, the end of turn phase, solo mode play, enemy decks. So it's probably more or less the same, it's just tiny pages. <laughs> so it looks looks like a big box or a big book. All right, let's move on to the next uh, deck. And this is the Kraz, the Kraz. Also with some nice art on the sides there. And the ruthless Kras are burning inside with their devotion to the essence of frenzy. They have a hive mind and don't hesitate to sacrifice their own fellows to increase the brutality of their attacks. Cool. Let's open that up and take the shrink rub off. So here is Phaeus, their champion. 
scarred of the crass. And he's pretty powerful, but he doesn't have any attack. So this is their attack power and this is their health, which I guess is pretty clear. Some acolytes there. Another one, Chieftain, Eruption Catalyzer. So cool artwork again on these. Blistering Rider. And some ritual cards. <laughs> and these are their sanctuaries, steaming caves, which increases your hand limit. Source of the flow. The colony gates. And the deeps of Dosnia. All right. So those are the crass. All right, moving on to the Molran. I like these, the, they are basically cat people. They are very powerful on the offensive, although there's a panda in there as well. <laughs> and apes, yeah, they're just like beast men, really, from the jungle. Strong and savage, the Molran are devoted to the essence of power. They fight united with impetus and bravery. Nothing can stop them as long as they rely on each other. Okay. So, let's open up this package. And this is Nomar, the force of the Molran, their champion. Looking very fierce indeed. There's the Resolute Shaman, the Mocking Hunter. Shadow of the Valley. I've seen these a lot. I've played this deck quite often <laughs> with the prototype. Cunning Instructor. Pilgrim of the Gorge. Bear Man. Peaks Chieftain. The Hoarder of the Den, which is a two-headed Rhino Man. <laughs> Here's the Hammering Brotherhood. The Pandas. Roar of the Peaks. The Elusive Scrapper. Savage Fang, Boar Man. So we got Bebop and Rocksteady in this deck, <laughs> more or less. And some rituals. Just a few rituals. These have less rituals and more acolytes than the other decks. And their sanctuaries. The Cairn of the Brave with the lion on top there. It's cool. Towering Arena. Gurunath. Garunath. First stone and a branch of the clans. So those are their sanctuaries. Okay, cool. And finally, we have the wall. Kind of menacing. And the wall holding terrible secrets behind their dreadful masks. The wall venerate the essence of decay and are able to raise undead armies from their fallen warriors who fight like they have nothing to lose, which is true, of course. Okay, let me open this. Okay, Taldun, Sunset of the Wool, which is their champion. Looks pretty cool. And then we have several of these acolytes, which I haven't seen the art for yet, because again, the prototype did not have all the art. Tamer of the Mosques, cool. Seeker of the Collectors. A recruiter, a mentor, some legions. <laughs> Glacial Warlord. Ravenous Horde, Breeze of Taldun, Cursed Enforcer, Chilling Freak, I can say that again, and some rituals with a cool mask. 
the elixir of callback, the verdict of the ice. And then, oh, we got some more of these cards here as well. But first, there are sanctuaries, the muttering ice canyons, dizzying bridges of Alithman. That looks really cool. I like that art. Twilight caves, and the vault of the collectors. All right. So those were the wool, which also comes packed with those uh, solo cards. So if you if you went for just the the tuck boxes with the three factions in it, then you know this set would have these cards in it, and this uh, trilogy would have these cards in it. So uh, if you have both, you have all of these, of course. So this is what I played. Uh, on my playthroughs of the solo mode. Feldris, the Forgotten King, which is the Corruptor. And they have the Roman Glacier Construct, with the final art. And the Eternal Watcher Construct, which is an Earth Elemental and an Ice Elemental, so that's pretty cool. It's really nice. And again, just the, the turn structure and the uh, attribute cards, reference cards which are handy. So uh, that's pretty cool. There's two sets of solo mode cards there. This is the rule book. We've already seen that. These crystals uh, are used... Oh, I, I just remembered those crystals are, of course, your your summoning power. So the amount, your money, basically, your mana, if you will, that you gather and use to pay cards to play on the table. And these tokens... Oh, wait, you got these as well. So. I used these in the prototype, so these are used on the champions, so you can take those tokens away or put them on there if you want to indicate, you know, their effect to just basically their, uh, to help you remember uh, effects and the health tokens. And these are the, the power of your sanctuaries, basically. Um, and you can put these on your sanctuary card or put them on first and then take them off as they power up or however you want to do it or just use one and slide it up and down um, this is the health of those uh, the defense basically of the sanctuaries here's plus one damage tokens plus one and plus one health and they are double-sided just very simple and small cardboard tokens of a regular thickness and you get two of those sheets in the second sheet has some more of these and uh, plus one uh, you know buying power mana if you want to call it that and um, the health and damage and these heart tokens as well so yeah pretty simple but uh, they do the job but the kickstarter edition came with these upgraded tokens for your uh, sanctuary's power and defense and uh, they're really nice. They are made of wood and uh, they're, th these are blue, painted blue, the others are white. And these have these nice, um, well, brick shields, if you will, printed on them. Uh, not double-sided, just on one side. But yeah, you can take those and then put them on your sanctuary and move them down the track as they get damaged. And that's pretty nice. So you have those and there's plenty in here for all of your sanctuaries and these as well. So let's take a closer look. And that is a white token with blue, light blue printed on it. And that also looks really nice. And that is, again, you can put that on your sanctuary and uh, use those instead of the cardboard tokens. Let's take a look at this art in here as well. And we have some more cards here. So these, I believe, are the promo cards. Uh, let's have a look. So these are the promo cards for each of the factions. So we have you can you can tell which they are by their color. So let me just put this away so I can recognize the colors of the of these decks. So this is blue, so that belongs to the Thanon. So you get an extra ritual, which is two cards, and another ritual. So they get three new ritual cards that you may add to the deck if you want to. 
This is the purple one, so that would be the Antar, I guess. Um, so they have a new Acolyte in there twice. Unconscious Grabbler. And a Sisterhood uh, Collector with some promo art. If I recall correctly, there was a tier where you could have your own, you know, your face or, or just anything you wanted to uh, be included in the art. So there were a couple of backers who, you know, did that. It's pretty fun. Sprout of Inashtet. So these are new cards for the Ganto. And a Groundskeeper Mystic. So these belong to them. Then we have for the Kras, we've got Smoldering Leech, Acolytes, new, and a Sacrifice of Souls. I think we've seen that. This is just an extra card then, maybe, not sure. Here for the uh, Molran, a Primeval uh, uh, Defender. It's pretty cool. Big Cave Bear Man. And Revenge, new Ritual. It's cool. All right. And then finally for the wool, we've got a Meticulous Scavenger Acolyte and an Ice Scryer. Kind of reminds me of Loki a bit. <laughs> so we have that. Oh yeah, these are the nodes, which is also used in the, the uh, solo mode. The uh, AI does not have sanctuaries, they have nodes. And uh, there's three of them that you need to defeat. So I'll put that there with the uh, solo cards. And here is an avatar, which also was a different game mode, I believe. So there's a couple of avatars. Um, kind of, I don't know if they belong to a faction. Probably not, there's four of them. But those look really nice, some really cool art. So we got four different avatars. Then we have Aura cards, which is new to me. Two of those. We have new artifacts, Sword of the Savlar, which kind of looks like these are artifacts that you can use with any faction, or maybe just in a solo mode. The Dragon Staff, the Ring of Swiftness, the Orb of Illusion, Tome of the Foresighted. So those are some extra cards. So I'll have to look that up in which game mode you can use those. And two cards to kind of make your own card, to make your own uh, avatar or, or, you know, the bad guy for the solo mode. <laughs> so that's nice to have. And those are all the cards. So in here we have those avatars, three of them printed on this. And this is just a very simple uh, paper insert so uh, just to keep things apart to separate them and in here are all the names of the backers all right so that's all pretty cool and uh, let's take a look at the bottom of the box because underneath here is a slide out a drawer which has the playmats and as you can see there's room for more. So the extra playmats I get actually do fit in here. So that's pretty nice. So let's take a look at this playmat. Let me just put this to the side for now. And maybe the decks as well. So I have a little bit more space. And these are really, really lovely playmats, as you will see. Oh, other way around. So there we go. This is one of the playmats which has these uh, catfolk again on them the mole ran and um, so this is basically your playing area you've got four cards that you can play in defense and four in offense um, you've got uh, room for placing cards here here and here with a logo on it can't quite make it out but uh, that's pretty nice and you got some over there as well and here is where you place your sanctuaries. And yeah, the sanctuaries have... Oh, wait, I don't have any sanctuaries uh, at hand right now, but I'll show you. So these sanctuary cards, as you have seen, have these tracks on them for the small tokens. So you can take... 
you know, these shield tokens, put them on here and just slide them down or these tokens and put them there because the logo is underneath here. So it tells you where to put everything. And um, the bigger tokens can be placed on the, uh, the mat. So these are bigger squares because this wouldn't fit on these small, um, you know, these, these squares, diamonds. And so they printed these faint outlines here on the mat. So you can just put those tokens on here and just slide them or just put them all on there and take them off if you want to. So that's pretty nice as well. It's very thoughtful to, uh, to add those there as well. Convenient. And then the second mat is another really cool looking mat here on the new design which does the same it's just a different design so that looks really cool so each player can have their own mat and you sit across from each other so this and the other half kind of makes uh, the battlefield so yeah that is pretty cool let's take a look at the other mats so the other mats came in this plain brown box but you're supposed to store them in there anyway. So let me just take those out and just check out this first mat. All right, so this looks really nice. So we've got that, um, forgot the name, uh, <laughs> the bad guy. <laughs> Let's just call him the bad guy over there and this Hydra over here. So two of the bad guys you fight in a epic uh, duel over here and again with the uh, indicated spots to put all your cards and the defense and the power of these sanctuaries and that also looks really nice and then finally we have this one which looks like this and that is basically what we also saw inside the box in the art uh, which has the champions of all the six factions gathered together. So that is also really cool. That looks just, that just really looks really good. And those will fit in into this drawer with the other two just nicely. So everything can fit into your big box. And then finally, we also have these the Champions and Villains set of foil cards. Let me just open that up. And these are pretty nice. So these are the foil cards of all the Champions and the Villains. And look at that. So they are very foily. <laughs> very, very um, reflective, actually. More, more so than any foil cards I've ever seen. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Might be a little bit much. Oh, and they are double-sided. The Echo of Burrell. Ooh. Because, yeah, when you defeat a champion, they turn into their Echo, and you can use them again or something. That's pretty cool. So we have that. Vatap here, which we've also seen. Echo of Vatap. Actually, I haven't checked if the regular cards are double-sided as well. Probably. And the Echo of Innerstedt. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they are very reflective. So uh, I think I'll end up sleeving these. Because the champions aren't shuffled into your deck anyway. They are kept aside. <laughs> so yeah, I like the foil cards, but they might be overdone just a little bit. But yeah. They're, they're pretty cool. It is pretty nice to have foil cards. Here he is, the, the Corrupter. That was the name I was looking for. The Corrupter. Veldris, the Forgotten King. And this just has a black back. So that one, then we have their constructs again. The, the ice construct and the earth construct. And here is the uh, the other corruptor, 
Mantora of the Depths. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly reflective. The Night Dweller Construct and the Howling Seeker Construct. Okay, so those are basically the same cards as you already got with the game, just foil if you want to use those for your fancy, you know, villains or champions. It is pretty cool. It was a nice add-on. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna put that back with the rest in the box as well. And that was everything that comes with Sanctuary, the Keeper's Era. So that was my unboxing of Sanctuary, the Keeper's Era by Tabula Games. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you hit the bell icon, you'll also get notified whenever I upload a new video. And please also consider becoming a Patreon saint to my channel by clicking the Patreon link in the description below or the icon at the end of this video that will take you to my Patreon page where you can read how you can support my channel and that will get you your name in the credits of all of my videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Board Game Heaven.